So nasty. So, so nasty. Hey, what's up, you guys? Shardimus Prime here, doing another Marvel Legends action figure review on the Walgreens exclusive Marvel Legends Infamous Iron Man. If you're trying to pick this up, you can do so at Walgreens. I just said it's a Walgreens exclusive, but if you're trying to get your Marvel Legends, you can do so at Mega City, City of Collectibles, where you can pick up your Marvel Legends and all kinds of other action figures. They have their daily deals and an awesome rewards points program. So check them out. Link in the description below. And I gotta give a big thanks to x Manny 87 and Justine for helping make this review possible. I was able to buy this figure off of x Manny 87 He found this over on the East Coast and sent it my way. I really appreciate it, brother. Check out his YouTube channel. Link in the description below. And you can see that we get some effects parts right over here. Look very familiar. Anyway, on the side you can see the infamous Iron Man. There's infamous Iron Man again on the back. There's a read up over here. If you want to read it, go ahead and pause it right now. And then on this side you can see infamous Iron Man and then you get the Avengers logo spot merch on the top. Not much more at the bottom, so let's get to it and crack this thing open. And here's the infamous Iron Man figure out of the packaging. Now this is mostly reused parts from the invincible Iron Man figure that came out not too long ago, which I don't have a big problem with. You know, they look a little bit similar in design anyway. And we haven't seen these accessories before, you know, but we get some new color right over here, so which I do like and try to get a little creative with it. What do you think? Let me know in the comment section below. But anyway, let's take a closer look at those accessories and then we'll take a closer look at the infamous Iron Man. So here's everything that comes with the infamous Iron Man figure. We get these effects pieces over here and two interchangeable hands and two interchangeable heads. And these effects right here we've seen several times before already. I do like this translucent magenta color that they have for these. They're nice and pliable and you can wrap them around and do as you wish as you saw me playing with it at the beginning of the video. We get more of a, I don't know, a glossier sheen, you know, like a finer finish right here for these blast effects. Maybe I need to heat this one up or something. It looks a little slanted, but yeah. This is cool that you could port this into these repulsor blasting hands right here like we'd seen with Invincible Iron Man figures. So they do port in nicely right here. So that works out well. Or you could plug them into the bottom of the feet. I wish we actually got two more of these, you know, because you could have them, you know, at the bottom of the feet and coming out of the hands. And then this little glowing effect that they have on the back of the hands looks really good. I really like that quite a bit. You get the white and the green. So that looks pretty neat. Now to very briefly go over the history of the infamous Iron Man, which is very short-lived. It took place after Civil War II, which I thought was a pretty forgettable book. Uh, but anyway, this is Victor Von Doom uh, going good. His face is all cleaned up and everything, and he takes the armor of Iron Man. Iron Man's no longer with us. Well, he's with us via AI, and he explains that he's taking the armor and everything from him. So he's trying to be a good guy over here, even though he ends up fighting the thing. But yeah, this head sculpt looks really good with this silver paint right here. I do like it. It is the same head sculpt as the Invincible. Iron Man figure head sculpt as we'd seen before uh, but yeah they did add this nice bright silver paint right here and then I do like the line work with the black and the eyes look really clean I think that's very cool and I really like how the hood came out right here too I really like that texturing that looks great now I do wish that the hood was removable I'm sure customizers out there are gonna figure out a way to remove it but we do see uh, this infamous Iron Man without the cape and hood and if I t pop this off right here you could see how it's kind of poured it into the back and then I did try to peel this a little bit and you could see how it's connected to the top of the head and the side of the head so yeah I don't know if anyone's had the balls to heat this up and remove this let me know how it came out but I'm not gonna do that with my figure this is the only one I have. Uh, we also get a Victor Von Doom head sculpt right here, which I think looks great. I love the sculpt for this head sculpt. Looks very unique, you know, doesn't look like any other character to me. I really do like that. I like the aquiline nose that we're seeing right there, you know, it's kind of making him look unique and everything. And I do like how we have this nice brown paint mixed in here with the darker brown paint. So color variation in the hair looks awesome. I like the sculpt. And in case you're wondering, you can plop this head onto a chameleon body mold figure, even though the head does look a little big but yeah that does not look too bad to me at all however I will have this figure posed with the infamous Iron Man helmeted head sculpt right there on there instead just because I prefer that out of the two uh, by the way the cape looks awesome on this you know I really do like the cape quite a bit looks very good I love that textured green right there almost has a shimmer to it so that's pretty sweet but we also uh, you can remove it it doesn't plug into the back or anything there's no port for that this was kind of flipped up a little bit like that I did heat that up and you know got it to settle down a little bit and it can be a little finicky getting the cape on here in certain poses and stuff but it's definitely workable but putting it off to the side and looking at the rest of this body mold uh, again it is the same as this uh, invincible Iron Man figure so nothing new as far as sculpting goes uh, these lines right here are just deco so but I do like how the deco came out you know nice bright green right there and I like how it fades so that's really cool 
I like what they've done with the plastic. It has this really nice metallic fleck to it, so that's pretty neat. Uh, you can see a little bit of these lines, though, in the plastic from the mix, so that's a little irritating. I call that marbling sometimes, but it seems like they're getting better at it, so it's just coming up as these strong, unwanted lines, which can be irksome, but not the worst. Again, we already looked at the hands. I do like the attention to detail with the green paint right here in the hinges. That's pretty cool. I like that quite a bit. Then we also get that green paint in the armpits right over there. Looks pretty good. And here's looking at the back of the figure. I mean, I'm not surprised that they didn't add any paint right here on the back. There's no real need to. Oh, wait, we get some on the back of the legs. That's cool. You got your doom butt. And then here's the front. And this looks pretty consistent. You know, I like that. Looks pretty good. And then here's looking. We get some more green added right over there. And then the feet are the same as Invincible Iron Man. But yeah, I like how that green looks. And he still has the peg holes under his feet. So I'm going to go through the articulation with this cape on just so we can see how long it'll last until it pops off. So uh, getting the head to tilt upward is a bit tricky. There's so much going on right here but luckily the plastic is fairly soft so you can get them to look up just a little bit but not much uh, you can get the head to look downward you get side to side motion and not really head tilting with the maskless head sculpt yeah you're going to be able to get them to look all the way up right there uh, the shoulders move outward that far you can move them downward and you can rotate this uh, full 360 uh, you're going to have a hard time doing that with the right side right over here just because it's going to get in the way and there goes the cape uh, you get a bicep swivel double jointed elbows and then the wrist turns side to side and hinge up and down no hinging articulation on these repulsor blasting hands. He crunches forward, back, waist swivel, hips move outward that far, he'll kick forward that much, not back at all, upper thigh cut, double jointed knees, ankles move down, they move up, and he has a beautiful ankle pivot. Now measuring out this infamous Iron Man figure, you can see that he's standing just under seven inches tall. And then here's the infamous Iron Man next to his mold mate, we have the invincible Iron Man. And one thing that they did fix here was the feet. I remember I had a problem with the feet. You could see the feet are kind of sticking outward at a weird angle. That was a bit irksome, so that's a lot better on this newer figure right here. I appreciate that. And then for your Doom comparison, we have our Toy Biz Marvel Legends Series 2 Doctor Doom, which I think still holds up. I think that's still a very good figure. And then we have the Future Foundation Doctor Doom, which came out in, I think, 2013. Thank you so much, Devil's Do. Now, there is another version of this with the green, and I really like that figure. I still have it. Uh, but I think a lot of people out there want a newer Doctor Doom figure from Hasbro. That would be great to have, especially because this one does not have ankle pivot or bicep swivel. And then here's our infamous Iron Man next to the Marvel Legends Walgreens exclusive Thing figure. And man, I I still love this figure so, so much. It was really fun posing these two together. And then here's the infamous Iron Man next to your average 6 inch scale figure. We have the Marvel Legends Big Time Classic Spider-Man. Ooh, Iron Man with the green suit. Oh, I remember when I was a Spider-Man with the green suit. Everyone called me a letdown. I wish I had a cool green suit. Whoa! Oh, wait, wait no, this is the same old green... Oh, no! Oh, not again! Oh, man, and I don't even have the shield anymore! No! No, I don't want it! I don't want it! Oh, Mr. Doom, I don't feel so good. So I do like this figure, man. I think it is pretty cool, even though that this version of Doom was very short-lived, and it is a reused body mold with just some added parts to it, so it's not like there's a ton of new going on over here, but I do like it, and I do think it's pretty cool. However, I don't think it's for everybody. For myself personally, I'm glad that I have it in my collection, but it's not something I couldn't live without, you know what I mean? So at the price point of about 20 to 25 bucks, I'm giving this figure a sun rating of It's not too bad. Then I'd like to know what you guys think, so please let me know in the the comment section below. Hit that like button if you liked the video and hit the subscribe button as well as the notification bell if you have not already. And I gotta give a big thanks to all these people over here that support this YouTube channel. Your guys' contributions over on Patreon is very much appreciated. And if you want to see the latest Marvel news, be sure to check out MarvelousNews.com. And don't forget to follow me on Instagram, Twitter, Twitch, and Stardust. Links to everything in the description below. I'll catch you guys later. Peace! <laughs> Sharpness Prime videos. Hey, you should click one. Yeah, click on one of them. Or subscribe if you haven't.